Well, I am both excited and apprehensive. Hello, this is Mara Jade, and I'm here with my first Lord of the Rings video, and we have an official synopsis for the Lord of the Rings series being produced by Amazon. Like I said, I'm both excited because I love Tolkien's work, I love the world he created, the languages, cultures, and so forth, but at the same time, I'm a bit apprehensive based on what I've been reading and seeing these past several months. For example, in particular, the hiring of an individual whose sole purpose on set is to make the actors and actresses feel comfortable with sex scenes. But let's go into the official synopsis and I'll give my feelings on the story itself they are going for. So without further ado, let's go into this. Okay, so basically fans have been waiting patiently for three years and here is the synopsis. Amazon Studios' forthcoming series brings two screens for the very first time the heroic legends of the fabled Second Age of Middle-Earth's history. This epic drama is set thousands of years before the events of J.R.R. Tolkien's The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings and will take viewers back to an era in which great powers were forged, kingdoms rose to glory and fell to ruin, unlikely heroes were tested, hope hung by the finest of threads, and the greatest villain that ever flowed from Tolkien's pen threatened to cover all the world in darkness, hint hint, Sauron, hint hint. Beginning in a time of relative peace, the series follows an ensemble cast of characters both familiar and new as they confront the long-feared re-emergence of evil to Middle-earth. From the darkest depths of the Misty Mountains, to the majestic forests of the elf capital of Linden, to the breathtaking island kingdom of Numenor, to the furthest reaches of the map, these kingdoms and characters will carve out legacies that live on long after they are gone. So that is the official synopsis for the show itself. Here is a map and down on the left is Numenor. It's an island basically. Just to go into a brief, very brief history on the island, it was raised from the sea as a gift to men by the Valar. And basically it was the Numenarians, which became the Dunedain. And the Dunedain is what Aragorn is descended from. And the Valar prohibited the Numenarians from going west, at least so far west that they could not see the island because then they would hit the undying lands which is forbidden to men. So because the Numenarians were upset at that and felt like they were being deprived of everlasting life, decided to go east instead as um, first, I guess, benevolent conquerors for one of a better, it's an oxymoron, but for one of a better way of putting it, to eventually tyrants. And that's basically the uh, first and second ages. Um, in a nutshell, there's so much more to both those ages than uh, I don't know if the Amazon can exactly cover even in the second age in this series. But, okay, so like I said, I'm excited because I love Tolkien's work. They have so much to work with. This is Marillion. This is a first age primarily novel, The Children of Huron. Hell, even... Baron and Luthien, which is the poem that Aragorn is singing in, I believe, Fellowship of the Ring. When uh, one of the hobbits asks him what he's uh, describing, he's essentially describing that poem, which reflects the current his current situation with Arwen. But I'm not going to go in entirely into that. But like I said, they have so much to go off of. But I'm looking at this. I want to be excited. Hoping, fingers crossed, that they at least respect what Tolkien created. However, apprehensive because of what I mentioned earlier about the um, on-site uh, individual hired primarily to make the actors and actresses feel comfortable with sex scenes, which uh, goes into my fear that they will twist it in a way to be more like Game of Thrones than Lord of the Rings. Trying to capitalize at least on the somewhat still remaining popularity of Game of Thrones, yes, I'm going to ignore what happened in Season 8, but still, you know, it was popular for a while. And and I'm worried about that. I'm worried about that being. Like, yes, there was nudity in Tolkien's work, but there was never really explicit sex scenes. Um, I don't want them to at all gear it more like Game of Thrones. Please stay true to the source material, at least as, as true as you can. I'm okay with people taking liberties with work as long as they do not deviate too far from the source material. For example, bringing up the movies Lord of the Rings, they completely cut out the Tom Bombadil parts from the book. Um, another example is the Arwen scene, um, where she takes Frodo uh, from the group and 
rides to Rivendell and then is being chased by the ring rates. Well, guess what? In the book, that never happened. Never happened at all. She was never there. She was still in Rivendell. The person, or I should say the individual who showed up, was actually a male elf named Glorfindel, who basically put Frodo onto the horseback, slapped the horse's butt, and the horse rode off with Frodo by himself to Rivendell. Frodo gets there safely, and the rest of the group makes it their way uh, to Rivendell. So, again, example, I don't care if they take liberties. Two towers. Elves never came to Helm's Deep. Never. But it made for a very fantastic battle scene in the Two Towers, the second movie. So, I'm fine with it. It did not deviate too much from the source material. I, I don't want you to uh, take this as my apprehension means that I believe that this show is going to be woke, woke trash, however you want to put it. I don't necessarily believe the show itself will be woke. However, I, I fear, I fear that it's going to deviate too far from what Tolkien created. That's my apprehension and I might do a live stream uh, either on my channel. I have a friend who's thinking about doing a live stream on this news for his channel. So may when I know about that, I will let you all know and I'll give further thoughts on this. But let me know what you think down in the comments below. Are you looking forward to the show? Are you not looking forward to the show? Um, do you sh share in my pre apprehension? Do you think I'm being a little too apprehensive about it? I myself am like I told my friend, I'm waiting for trailers before I make final judgments. As apprehensive as I am, I always see something at chance. I gave Birds of Prey a chance. I gave Wonder Woman 84 a chance. And I'm willing to give this a chance because, like I said, I've, I've been a fan of Tolkien pretty much since I was very little. So let me know all your thoughts down in the comments below. If you like this video, leave a thumbs up. Share on social media if you will. This is Mara Jade. I'll catch you on the dark side and fingers crossed. Please, please, in the age of identity politics, please give us something nice for once. Take care.